If you would have told me last year that in 2020, J-Lo and Shakira would be starring in the Super Bowl, Hummer would be making a new vehicle, and I'd be reviewing the Motorola Razr flip phone, I'd say you were crazy and ask what year you time traveled from. But here we are. This video is sponsored by Audible. This strange box contains the world's first hot dog style folding smartphone. You know, where it folds long ways instead of the fat hamburger style way, right? Anyone else learn that in school? We've tested folding phones here in the past on my channel with the Galaxy Fold and the FlexPi, but both of those were kind of like folding tablets, and this guy, well, it's more like a folding phone. This might also be the first phone where you want to keep the box. It's got a built-in rubber stand that'll redirect the phone speakers out the base towards the front. Kind of interesting. Let's see what else is in the box before we say hello to Moto. In this fancy magnetic case, we get some instructions, along with the headphone dongle, 18 watt charger, braided headphones, and a braided USB-C cable. Seems like a pretty nice package. I've heard many people ask if this new Motorola Razr can still handle those angry closes, you know, like after a phone call and the phone gets aggressively shut. Today we'll be answering that question once and for all. Now I think it's time to review our new friend. Hi there, let's get started. Now the thing I like most about this Motorola Razr is the form factor. When it's open, it takes up just about as much space as my Note 10 Plus, which I'd say is a pretty common phone size these days. But the Motorola Razr has the ability to fold in half and quite literally take up half the space when it's shut. It's a form factor that actually makes sense. Taking a close look at the hinge of the new Razr, we can see some exposed gear looking things along the side. These don't actually spin like we saw in the Galaxy Fold. These teeth just keep the two sides, both left and right, folding at the same speed, so one side doesn't fold quicker than the other. The paper thin screen lifts away from the foam body as it starts shutting, and you can quite literally see the light shining through the components. At first glance, this does seem kind of sketchy, but it still feels pretty solid, even if the screen lifting off is slightly unnerving. The bottom edge of the screen tucks a little bit into the base of the phone as it slides down to compensate for that crease-free fold in the center. There are no folding lines in the center of this screen like we saw on the Galaxy Fold. Motorola did say on their website that this phone is designed with a zero gap hinge that allows both sides to close perfectly flush to protect the main display. But unfortunately, I still definitely see a gap between the two halves of the phone when it's closed. And I'm not like a dust expert or anything, but dust can still definitely sneak in there. And it's not perfectly flush with a zero gap. Calling it perfectly flush with zero gap is incorrect, at least with my unit. We'll test out the dust thing more in just a second. The front smaller screen is not a fully functional display like we saw in the Galaxy Fold. This is more just for notifications and stuff and can't control the entire phone. I'm getting distracted though. It's time for that scratch test. Now, the whole trick with these folding phones is that the screen is actually made from a thin piece of plastic. Plastic has multiple pitfalls. For one, you can't apply a screen protector or the display might break. This is super unfortunate since once again, we do start seeing damage at a level two. A level three almost felt like my Mo's pick was gonna start cutting through the display. And my fingernails once again can leave a mark on the screen. I was previously excited when I read that Motorola's design had a zero gap hinge with perfectly flush closure. Since avoiding screen damage is one of the main things you wanna do with the folding phone. But as we see with the screen this soft, dust and dirt are still gonna be an issue. The simplest solution, like I suggested with the Galaxy Fold, is to just vacuum out your pockets every morning and you should be just fine. The outer screen, since it doesn't need to be folded, is made from glass. I can work my way up through the most scale of hardness and we find that the 2.7 inch outer display is confirmed. Scratches at a level six with deeper grooves at a level seven. One cool little Easter egg with this high-tech 2020 Razer phone is that if you go into the hidden settings and drag Retro Razer onto the main dropdown, you can make your sweet new $1,500 phone look like a $15 phone. I'd like to see an iPhone attempt that one. As far as the build quality of the Motorola Razr, the whole thing does feel relatively sturdy. The earpiece grille is made from metal and won't be falling out on its own. The top curve is made from glass, which also protects the front-facing 5 megapixel camera. The original Razr from 2004 only had a 0.3 megapixel camera. The frame is made from metal, along with the textured metal power button. And the volume rocker right below that power button is also metal. 
The hinge cap is a vital component that holds both halves of the phone together and is also made from metal. The frame of the bottom half of the phone is also made from metal. The phone is very well balanced on each half of the hinge. The bottom with its plastic chin does include a fingerprint scanner, which is actually pretty scratch resistant. But I still managed to inflict a bit of damage with my razor blade. Even with those scratches though, the phone was able to read my fingerprint and unlock the phone every single time. Not too shabby. The bottom of the razor has a plastic speaker grill and a USB-C charger. If we take a look under the grill plate, we can see that the speaker is positioned on the right side of the phone and does seem to have its own water resistant mesh protecting the opening. Motorola does say that this phone is splash resistant. We'll have to assess that claim more thoroughly from the inside when we take it apart. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that teardown. We know that the outer screen is made from glass, along with the glass camera lens that's covering the 16 megapixel main camera on the back and the dual tone LED flash, which are both covered with glass. The back panel, however, is plastic. Now I never had one of these Razer phones growing up. I got a job delivering pizzas and I bought myself the Nokia 6800 instead, with its full QWERTY keyboard. But I do remember how popular these things were. As you can clearly see, this is a Razer on a Razer on a Razer above a Razer. The Razer logo down here at the bottom of the phone is very securely glued into place and won't be coming off on its own over time, which is of course a good thing. With the Razer's current price tag of $1,500, you'll probably have to start selling off the old Tamagotchi and Beanie Baby collection from the last time the Razer phone existed. I think it's time to revisit that dust situation. Now obviously, this is a bit on the extreme end of the pocket sand scenario, but phones are probably the most abused pieces of tech on the planet, and since Motorola's hinge does leave a gap, it's something we have to watch out for. I'll let the dust shift around into every possible surface crack and crevice of the Razer, it is hard to watch, but it's for science. Planet Earth is covered in dirt and we should be ready for anything. The dirty phone still functions well enough, mostly. The screen has not broken yet, but the sound of the hinge is more like nails on a chalkboard at this point and not as much buttery smoothness like it was before. Looking close, we can see that one speck of dust has already managed to make its way under the screen, causing the light to reflect off the bulge a bit differently than normal. Rather unfortunate. Over time, this might damage the pixels from the back and kill the display. That compromising gap between the hinge and the display is going to cause an issue with dust in the future. Speaking of compromises, since this video was sponsored by Audible, I picked out a few new audiobooks at the beginning of the year to help me improve in certain areas. And Never Split the Difference is what I'm currently listening to. Empathy. It's about the negotiating tactics that the FBI's lead kidnapping negotiator used in international hostage negotiations. Pretty intense. You can get your first audiobook for free when you visit audible.com slash jerryrig or text jerryrig to 500-500. Audible has plenty of podcasts as well, along with A-list comedy and a huge selection of Audible originals. I usually listen when I'm at the gym. Never Split the Difference isn't all just about life or death negotiations. The same tactics can be applied at home, or to help get you a raise, or even negotiate more days off work with your boss. Communication is pretty useful stuff. You can get your first audiobook free with an Audible subscription. Link in the description, audible.com slash jerryrig, or text jerryrig to 500-500. And thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. Now like I mentioned before, this particular style of folding phone is my favorite so far. Rumor has it that Samsung is about to announce a phone with this same hot dog style folding capability. But Samsung's phone will also probably have the same plastic screen, which isn't a bad thing of course, it does work. As long as we all know it's plastic, and we all know it's a tad more fragile than glass screens, then we can take care of it. Another difference is that this plastic screen retains no heat from my lighter. The pixels are still very much alive after 25 seconds. The plastic is unmelted and actually still cool to the touch. The usefulness of this knowledge basically borders on zero, but as we know from the erroneously named zero gap hinge on this phone, zero doesn't actually mean zero. I'm mostly stalling at this point since this is one of the coolest phones that's ever come across my desk and I don't have a whole lot of confidence about its ability to survive what's coming. The feature of this folding phone I'm most curious about is its ability to be slammed shut after a phone call. 
Remember, there is still currently a rock behind the screen somewhere. And I'm slamming it shut just about as hard as a person can with one hand. And now with two hands. Even with two hand slams and a little pebble behind the screen, this Motorola Razr can withstand the abuse. And the phone definitely seems to be equipped to handle all abrupt phone hangups. I'd still take care of it though, since you never quite know which fold will be your last. I think it's time. Let's say you leave your phone on the couch, face down, and Great Aunt Susie comes over to ask why you didn't bring a special someone with you to the family reunion. She sits down and... Now your screen is unresponsive and has a cool new four-point design in the center. Not from the rock that got caught earlier, but from some physical component inside of the hinge that's under the display poking through the back of the screen. Each of the four corners of whatever that rectangle object is under there just got smushed into the soft backside of the screen. After turning the screen off and then back on again, the phone does return to functionality, but the four pixels do not recover. If we watch that one more time, we can see that it actually took a considerable amount of force before breaking. I am rather impressed. The Razer hinge is not as strong as the Galaxy Fold's hinge, but still holds its own. The phone is still functional, even after the screen is punctured from the back. The hinge is, you know, bent backwards and it's a little more floppy than usual. Something's broken inside, aren't we all? But it's still rather incredible the phone is still able to function like normal. That deserves a thumbs up. Moto is putting up a fight. It looks like one of the things that broke is whatever was holding down the screen inside of the chin. You can see the display pulling out a bit, revealing some pretty cool Faraday cage looking components like we saw inside of the Nokia 3310. The teardown should be interesting. Touching down at the bottom edge of the display, however, immediately kills the entire row of pixels running up the screen. I'll test my theory again by touching over here on the right side. Yep, definitely a bad idea. The paper-thin OLED display technology still kind of blows my mind. Since the bottom of the screen has been pulled out of the phone, it's not really going to fold back flat anymore. The little bubble near the hinge shows how thin and flexible the display can really get. Of course, it'll always need the foam body to support it, so it won't crease or bend in the wrong spot and get wrecked. But as we can see, it does take quite a bit of abuse. Flexible displays still need a gentle curve when they fold. If the fold gets too tight and the screen actually gets creased, the whole thing dies completely. And it's over. We now know the limit of the new Motorola Razr. Angry phone calls are fine, but probably shouldn't let anyone sit on your open phone, or it might be curtains. I think we should perform an autopsy. Let me know if you want to see the insides of this thing down in the comments. Are you interested in buying a folding phone? Or are you going to wait a little while longer and see what the next generation looks like? Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. Grab your free audiobook with the link in the description. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.